Hello and welcome to another devotion for the Advent season 2023. Um, sorry that these aren't every day and they're just coming out as they do, but um, hopefully they're of some meaning to you and maybe you can even listen to uh, previous ones if you are needing something every day. But um, as we come to Matthew again today, I'm going to finish the genealogy and we'll, we'll talk about some things in there. So let's pray. Father God, as we wait for the coming of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would prepare our hearts. Lord, we find ourselves in a position of waiting for Christmas Day, a celebration of Jesus' birth. We know he's already come in the flesh to earth to redeem us, and that's been accomplished. We also are waiting for Jesus' presence in our life every day, that we would be mindful and open and seeking your presence coming to us every day because you have invited us into a relationship with yourself through Jesus Christ. And so help us to wait for Jesus to come into each moment of our day. And then, Father, we also come into this season of waiting waiting for the second coming of our Lord and Savior when he won't come as a baby in a manger, but as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, may these reflections help us in this Advent season to get beyond the tinsel and the lights and the glitter and the gold, and the gifts and the buying and the spending and the partying and all of that and really enter into your throne room and into your presence to enjoy you in this season. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask this. Amen. So I'm going to finish the genealogy today, and it is a large chunk with a lot of unfamiliar names or oddball names. And I'm just going to tell you up front that Matthew's genealogy is not complete. It doesn't include every father and son that could have been. He very intentionally uh, sets up three sets of 14. We don't 100% know why he does that, but he leaves people out. In some cases, he appears to confuse uh, people and not have the right people, and yet I'm sure there's a reason why he did it the way he did, because it's also um, it's also true that Matthew was writing to try and convince a Jewish audience that Jesus is the Messiah. And he would have known and they would have known the things that he was skipping, the people he was omitting, the, the names that he was uh, substituting. They would have known them. And so I'm sure um, he's trusting in his early Jewish audience to put together some things that perhaps we can't put together today. So let me just read. I'll, I'll begin with David. You remember King David, who uh, Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. We talked about that last time. Then we have Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Ammon, Ammon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. And so the end of the monarchy, if you will. And as I said, that group of names is a mixed bag. There are some good kings in there. There are some bad kings in there. Um, just a reminder that um, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so when you look at these lists, you know, don't put them on a pedestal. <laughs> They're not, they were not, they never were great people. They were chosen by God to bring the Messiah, but you know, God has chosen us to be his children as well. So whatever you, whatever feelings you may have, 
uh, the insignificance and unworthiness. This list of names has plenty of people in it that, that fit that. So verse 12, after the exile to Babylon, we have Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiad, Abiad the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Achim, Achim the father of Elihud, Elihud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Well, if you read Luke's genealogy, you know there were a whole lot more than 14 generations in some of these places. So he's doing something stylistically. Um, one of the things that uh, we sometimes want to do as Western European rationalists is we want to um, say that it's completely wrong to eliminate names or skip generations or put things together, but they had a much more poetic, uh, theological way of writing and thinking, even about biblio bibliographic stuff. And so the names that are in here, they speak... Um, they speak of the unworthiness of man and yet God's willingness to use us. And then we come to verse 16 and we have the Jacob's the father of Joseph, who is the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So, you know, we, we trace the genealogy through the line of Joseph. But Mary is also of the line of David and her genealogy is traced in Luke, and so that explains some of the differences as well. One of the things that I just want us to take a moment again and is to reflect on the fact that God includes the mother in the genealogy. I, I mentioned it before, and it's really important. Women have a high place of honor in God's mind and in God's theology. Now, it doesn't always come through. Certainly, we have a paternal, patriarchal society. Certainly, there were lots of abuses and misuses. And certainly, um, for a Jewish man, you would rather be born, uh, you know, anything other than a woman. And so... You know, there's, there's certainly, um, as some are want to say, some mis misogynistic ideas or anti-women ideas that get conveyed through the history. But Matthew is making sure that we know that Mary is important here. And we're going to see more of Mary um, as we go through our time of Advent as we go through this. But one of the things that I just want us to realize is as we're reflecting on this once again, in that list of fathers, there were lepers, there were righteous and unrighteous, there were good kings and bad kings, there, there were all kinds of things going on there. And God was able to to work all things together for good. They were carried off into captivity because of their rebellion and their disobedience. They were restored to Israel and to the nation and to Jerusalem, but they never really were restored with a full kingdom. And even the Maccabees and the Maccabean revolt gets completely skipped over in this genealogy. So, it's just really important for us as we, as we look at this to be mindful of the fact that God is for us. He uses ordinary people to accomplish his purposes. So as you go about your day today, don't think you have to be something special. Just be you and ask God to use you. 
Father, help us. So often we, we think we don't have the skills, we don't have the language, we don't have the giftings that we need to have in order to be used by you. But Lord, help us to realize that's not true. You made each one of us unique and special. Each of us will bring your presence and your grace to our world in a way that is unique and different. And all you ask from us is that we be open to be used by you. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you today. As you journey towards Christmas Day and this Advent season, keep your eyes fixed on the horizon, looking for the coming of the King. But don't overlook the people around you in the process. Love them and serve them to the best of your ability. Allow God to use you to be a blessing to them. God bless you today.